Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to a non-fiction November type of video um, because I think I did, didn't do one last year, but the year before, I always, I know that some people, even though if they are ferocious readers and they love to read, they struggle uh, with getting into non-fiction and it's boring and it's heavy and it's, you know, not entertaining, uh, all that kind of not true uh, prejudices. And so I, I always like to do a video in which I help people along, I hope, uh, how to get started. Some, you know, so sort of tips and tricks if you would like to venture into nonfiction, uh, but have sort of a, you know, it, it, it doesn't really work, um, then I hope this video might be helpful. Um, but first, uh, I did that already on my Friday Reads uh, a video uh, two days ago, but I want to um, stress it again. Um, the BookTube Prize, we need more judges. I leave all the information down below. The call for judges from Robert from Bader Hortz, who organizes the BookTube Prize, and also the form where you can sign up. And you don't have to sign up for the whole uh, year. You can sign up for one particular round uh, for a particular set of books, fiction, nonfiction, translated fiction. So if you haven't signed up yet, and if you're watching this video, which means you're part of the BookTube community, Community, please consider signing up as a judge. Anyway, nonfiction. So there will be seven sort of tips and tricks or what have you, um, ways you could think about how to get into nonfiction. And I will have a book for each of the seven uh, tricks, which doesn't mean, I mean, I recommend the books, but it doesn't mean that you have to read that particular book in order to, you know, uh, get into um, a nonfiction or if you want to think about that particular idea or tip. So the first one is if you would have difficulties with getting into nonfiction, maybe try graphic nonfiction. Uh, there's a lot of graphic memoir, graphic biography, uh, and other graphic nonfiction out there, like this one, for instance, Mira Jacob, Good Talk, which is a graphic memoir published uh, two years ago. Mira Jacob is a first uh, generation American. Her parents came from India. Uh, Mira Jacob married um, a white man and they have a, a child, a son. And these is like you see a memoir in conversations. It's about talking with the son and husband and wife about race. So it's it's a topical memoir. It's not like when she was born, but she gives background and it's uh, a bit text heavy, um, which is, you know, but the, the, the drawings is really, I, I, th I thought it was really, really good. It's also entertaining um, and it tackles a topic that I've found interesting, but it's also quite like graphic novels, uh, so graphic nonfiction is also quite, um, you know, uh, fast to read and to get into something. And then if you like, uh, for instance, this topic, you know, race or immigration, then you might find something either in graphic uh, uh, nonfiction form or in uh, non-graphic nonfiction form to get on and read on. You can see here, um, here, is another uh, that's a graphic non uh, a graphic biography about Rosa Luxemburg. So there is plenty out there if you want to venture into the graphic nonfiction uh, theme. Um, uh, the second uh, uh, tip is uh, how did I call it? Topic that you're personally interested in. Um, memoir is always a good uh, way to start, but I, I think more generally, of course, you should. Try something that you are interested in and something that is maybe more storytelling than fact. Um, uh, and that can be any uh, genre of uh, uh, science uh, science fiction, <laughs> every genre of nonfiction. You have biographies that are more told like a story. You have uh, memoirs is certainly a good way to start, like I said, because it's very story heavy always. Uh, but there are other books about, I read a fantastic book about birds that is very much a story uh, telling uh, thing. And I, I have another um 
t-shirt situation here and the t-shirt really doesn't fit with the lipstick so we have to get rid of that anyway um, a book that um, I'm interested in everything that has to do with the brain for instance and uh, also uh, medical stuff uh, so I uh, can recommend this one as a memoir, An Unquiet Mind by K. Redfield Jamison. Uh, and the book was published in 1995. Uh, it's, a, it's just what it says on the tin. It is her account of struggling with uh, depression. Um, and like I said, I'm interested in that topic. I'm interested in memoir. So this is a good pick um, to get into the topic and then maybe venture out. Uh, you know, it's like, I always think reading nonfiction is like when you throw a stone into a pond and you have these circles. So you start somewhere and then you feel not always, sometimes you feel, well, that's not for me. That topic is not as interesting as I thought, but Sometimes you always also have this topic is fantastic and then you just venture out um, and, and read other books of, of, about this topic. Sorry, that was a bit of an abrupt break, <laughs> uh, but uh, my telephone rang for no good reason. Anyway, the third uh, thing you might consider is, I called it uh, in the show notes, book that is helpful to you right now. And I don't mean self-help books. I mean, if you're into self-help books, that's nonfiction, go for it. I'm. It's not uh, something that I'm interested in. So what I meant is um, a topic that speaks to you in your current uh, life situation. And as an example, I chose this one. This is Where You Belong by Melody Warnick, Finding Home Wherever You Are. First published in 2000, not first published, it was published in 2017. And I came across this book uh, because Olive, from a book Olive, uh, who organizes Nonfiction November, uh, really loved it. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. And I've been living um, in a city for quite a while, uh, but I haven't really gotten this home town feeling at all. So this is something, I mean, it is a, in a way a self-help thing. Um, and I, I find it really charming. The book was charming about uh, Melody Warnick, you know, moving and trying to find ways of getting uh, this being at home feeling when she comes to a new place. So it, it suited me in my current situation and it was a, an engaging read. So if you find something, you know, uh, whether it's moving or whether it's uh, getting married, having children, you know, all these, a lot of times I would then recommend a memoir because it's storytelling and it's more relatable. Uh, but then that is a good way of getting started, I would say. The tip trick number four and five are sort of related, so I will uh, talk about them together. And again, we have the t-shirt situation that we have to fix. <laughs> um, if you are an, a fiction reader who likes uh, short stories, then maybe an essay collection, um, so shorter pieces collected together, or short stories if you are you know if essay seems like something I had to read for school um, and the book I uh, chose for this as an example is The Women I Think About at Night by Mia Kankimaki translated from the Finnish by Douglas Robinson um, and uh, this is a book that I read together with Heidi and we both really really enjoyed it so Mia uh, Kankimaki had a couple of women whom she uh, really admired, women who traveled because she's also, she loves to travel. She, you know, loves to write about travel. Um, and so she followed the path of various women um, to Africa, to Japan, and it's shorter pieces. I mean, they are connected, of course. It's not like an essay collection um, where there is no connection between the pieces. So the storytelling has an, an arc, an overreaching arc with all uh, the different travels, but it is shorter pieces. So you don't um, read one whole book about one person, but it's seven or ten. And that might be you know, a good way to get into if you are into the short story kind of thing. So choose shorter stories in nonfiction. And the next tip, like I said, is related because a lot of people, I'm just going to leave the t-shirt the situation 
and the you know not fitting the lipstick thing we just roll with it <laughs> anyway so a lot of people uh when i talk to them about nonfiction, and then it's oh it's all these you know thick books and uh it's not true. There's a lot of short nonfiction. So if one of the reasons that you have sort of this anxiety towards nonfiction and never ventured into it is that you think all the books are like that, that's not true. Look at this one, for instance. It's a modern classic, Audre Lorde, a black American feminist and thinker, a sister outsider. Um, and it's a hundred and... 180 pages and there are if you look for it there are really really uh, plenty of non-fiction books essay collections shorter essays that you only have one short essay of 80 pages or maybe two um, with 150 so if you're um, sort of what's holding you back is the 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 idea that you have to commit to a 700 page book that's not true and these are essays and speeches that audrey lord wrote over the course of um, a couple of years about feminism and race um it's it's like i said a modern classic if you haven't read it i can certainly recommend it even if you normally read 700 page tomes for nonfiction. Uh, tip number six is especially for um, readers out there when you read novels you're very plot oriented or you like mystery and crime you know the suspense uh, and no I'm not going to recommend true crime as such but read something you know page turning and uh, my example is Susan Orlean The Orchid Thief uh, that was published uh, again i have to look it up i'm sorry about that 1998 uh susan orlean has just a new book out about animals but that's not um it's more an essay collection about various animals which also fits one of my tips but this one is a page turner about you know the orchid world and how um things got stolen and she follows one of these people and it's really page turning it's told in such an engaging way but also um in such a suspenseful way <laughs> i just wanted to know what is gonna happen uh, to the, the guy and the orchids and so true crime of course can be suspenseful uh, but i would rather broaden the advice and say this look for something that is focusing on telling uh, a page turning story um, and you will not even realize that you're reading uh, nonfiction when you read something like that and my last advice is um, if you're into fiction and you have authors that you really like that you really enjoy I mean it doesn't have to be you know the love of your life kind of authors but authors that you enjoyed um that you would rate highly that you read books from and to see whether they have um uh, published nonfiction because um quite a lot of fiction authors venture into nonfiction um sometimes so i picked as an example deborah levy uh, the cost of living which is also a memoir uh part of her a three-part autobiography and i really enjoy her fiction uh janet winterson for instance i enjoy she wrote non-fiction uh ruth oseki um i i loved her her book uh, uh tale of the time for the time being and she wrote non-fiction so if you have a couple of authors i mean not all fiction authors write non-fiction obviously but if you have a couple of authors whose work you really enjoyed Go look whether they wrote nonfiction because chances are that the style of writing um, that you like you will find in the nonfiction and it's also uh, a way of learning more about an author that you really like anyway these are my seven sort of tips um, if you have difficulties getting into nonfiction I hope that this was helpful for you let me know whether you have uh, uh tips for people uh or maybe for yourself that you use to in order to get uh, into nonfiction and i'm looking forward to each to to those but also every other comment and i uh, thank you very much for watching um and i'll see you all soon in the next one